You're listening to Idioms and Phrasal Verbs with Mohit Sehgal. Chapter 1 Idioms and Phrasal Verbs Numbers 1 to 10 We begin with Under the Wire. Now, when you do something in the last minute or just in time, you do it under the wire. Let's hear a few sentences. I made it to the railway station just under the wire. I got in at 10.48 with my train set to depart at 10.50. Hmm, quite literally the last minute, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Let's take another sentence. The ambulance reached the hospital just under the wire, saving the critical patient's life. Well, cheers to the guy behind the wheel. So the guy behind the wheel refers to the driver and the wheel mentioned in the expression refers to the steering wheel. And that's under the wire. Let's get to number two. At number two, we have wear out. W-E-A-R-O-U-T. Now to wear out is a versatile phrasal verb that can be used for people as well as things. In its basic sense, to wear out means to deteriorate or to become almost unusable. Or in other words, when something comes to the end of its life, it is considered to have worn out. For instance, this cheap sweater wore out in just a few uses. Well, hopefully it did justice to the price before doing so. Taking another sentence, if you keep driving like that, your tires will wear out soon. Yeah, so apparently playing fast and the furious in the real world comes with a price. Someone can also wear out something by repeated, excessive or improper use. Let's have a sentence. She wore out her favorite dress by wearing it time and again and by often going to bed in it. I guess she has a sense of style, but she's a bit of a slob. (laughs) Slob, S-L-O-B, is a term for someone who is lazy, rather untidy and somewhat careless. Moreover, even people when fatigued or exhausted can be said to have worn out. The long wait for my bus under the blazing sun wore me out. She's got great stamina. She doesn't wear out easily. So that's number two, wear out. Let's go on to number three. At number three, we've got doze off. D-O-Z-E-O-F-F. Now doze off is a phrasal verb that means to fall asleep, especially for a short period of time. Let's observe the usage. Sarah dozed off during the boring movie. I was beginning to nod off while driving, so I pulled over and dozed off for a bit. Now you heard nod off in that sentence as well. That's N-O-D-O-F-F. How is it different from doze off? Well, they're pretty much the same. However, to nod off is closer in meaning to falling asleep unintentionally. Moving on to number four, At number four, we have make up one's mind, which quite simply means to decide. Going to some sentences, let's say someone is confused about the flavor of ice cream they should get. Um, strawberry or blackcurrant, I can't seem to make up my mind. And that's to say, I can't seem to decide. Talking about someone who is generally bad at deciding things, It takes my uncle forever to make up his mind, even when it comes to matters most trivial. Hmm, won't be any fun going out shopping with him. (laughs) Moving on to number five. At number five, we have up for. To be up for something means to be ready to take part in something. So if you're willing to do something or to join an activity, you're up for it. Observe. Hey, are you up for a movie? Sure, which one? And that's to say that you are willing to watch a movie. And if you're someone who loves to get behind the wheel, you could say something like, I love to drive. I'm always up for road trips. So that was up four. Coming to number six, we have take a rain check. R-A-I-N-C-H-E-C-K. Now to take a rain check is to politely refuse an offer now with the intention of taking it up later. So if you're invited to do something but you're not up for it, you say that you will take a rain check. Let's say your friends ask you to join them on the way to something but you don't wish to accompany them. Hey, we're going to the coffee house. Would you like to come along? 
Um, no, I guess I'll take a rain check. I've got some stuff to take care of. You guys go on without me. Thanks, though. Another example. A voice message is waiting for you that goes something like this. Hey, I just got in. Was a crazy day at work and I'm totally worn out right now. I know we had planned this dinner days ago, but I was hoping if I could take a rain check tonight and we could put this off to uh, perhaps tomorrow evening. Call me when you get this. Thanks. And that's taking a rain check. Moving on ahead to number seven. At number seven, we have twisting someone's arm. Nope, no one's limbs getting twisted. It's all figurative or metaphorical, so to speak. <laughs> so when you twist someone's arm, you force them or pressurize them into doing something that they are reluctant to do. Let's say you have a friend who's great at persuading people and getting them to do what he wants. That's a great friend to have, by the way, especially in tricky situations. So you'd recognize the same quality in them by saying something like, Sam is really good at twisting people's arms. The other day, this bouncer wouldn't let us into the club. Sam talked to the guy for five minutes and we were in. Could I get Sam's number? <laughs> so that's number seven on to number eight. At number eight, we have bail out of something. That's B-A-I-L-O-U-T. So when you bail out of something, you remove yourself from being a part of something. For instance, speaking of a lazy friend, you're such a slob, you bailed out of going to the gym again. Then, speaking of some trouble in paradise, which is an idiomatic way of hinting at problems in a romantic relationship. You can have a sentence as, I'd understand if you wanted to bail out of the relationship. Mm, not the easiest words to say or hear, eh? <laughs> Moving on to number nine. At number nine, we have give in. Now, give in is a phrasal verb to mean admitting defeat or surrendering. Generally, it's followed by the preposition to. For instance, if you had a lazy morning, your sentence could read something like, I tried to be up with the clock twice, but then I gave in to sweet slumber. And that's to say that you admitted defeat and surrendered to sleep. We've all been there, haven't we? <laughs> Coming to another sentence. Now, as I record this, the coronavirus scare is on the rise. But we're doing all we can to defeat the bug or even bugger. Bugger, B-U-G-G-E-R, is an informal term for a person or a thing that is annoying. So given this context, you could have your second sentence as The coronavirus is at large. While it may have us on the back foot, but we're not giving in. We're staying indoors and fighting the good fight. Here, here. Now you heard me say at large in the sentence, which is an expression used for a criminal who is at liberty and not yet captured. So that's my metaphorical reference to the fact that the cure for the virus is still not out and it is spreading free like a criminal. Hopefully, you'd be replaying this lesson in better time soon. Amen. Moving on to the final number 10. Finally, at number 10, we arrive at come along, which is a phrasal verb to mean going somewhere with someone. So if you wish to invite someone to join you while you're on your way to, uh, let's say, the coffee house, you could say, hey, we're going out to grab some coffee. Do you want to come along? To which you might say, Oh yeah, I'd love to come along. Alrighty then, that's all the 10 in chapter 1. Let's see if we can have all of these working together in a small little passage. Let's check that out. It was the day of our history exam. As expected, it was a lengthy paper. Most of the students finished just under the wire. I was one of them. Towards the end, we were all rather worn out. All I wanted to do was to head home and doze off. But my friends wouldn't hear of it. Apparently, they had made up their minds to go watch a movie together. I said that I wasn't up for it and that I'd like to take a rain check. But then, as was typical of him, my best friend began twisting my arm, telling me that I'd promised I wouldn't bail out of the next plan that we made. Sure enough, I gave in 
and decided to come along. Chapter 1 ends. This has been an original creation of Linguistica 7, downloadable from www.linguistica7.com. Find video lessons on youtube.com slash linguistica7. Thank you for listening.